You might remember a recent video I did on Raphael Warnock, who is the self-proclaimed pro-choice pastor who teaches at the same church that Martin Luther King Jr. taught at, and he was also recently elected as a U.S. Senator. Now, in that video, I talked about the logical and the theological issues with him priding himself as being a pro-choice pastor, and today we'll be discussing the logical and the theological issues with the tweet that he put out on Easter, where he said, The meaning of Easter is more transcendent than the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Whether you are a Christian or not, through a commitment to helping others, we are able to save ourselves. Now, what's wrong with this tweet? Let's get into it. But first, we should note that soon after he posted the tweet, he obviously got a lot of backlash about the tweet, and then he ended up deleting the tweet. And of course, a lot of reports started framing it as ultimately political, claiming that it was only coming from the religious right. But to be clear, this isn't about a religious right. And for the sake of this conversation, I couldn't even care less what his political position is. The issue isn't even ultimately about politics, so it can't be hand waved away that easily. The real issue is that Warnock identifies himself as a Christian, and a lot of people see him to be an authority on the Bible, and Christians are the ones that are responding to his message because on the face of it, it seems to be going 100% against the core of the Christian message. So after receiving a lot of backlash from Christians, he deleted the tweet, but he didn't follow up with another tweet clarifying what he meant, which to me is more of an issue. I mean, I can understand wording something awkwardly and then giving off the wrong impression, something that you weren't trying to imply, and then wanting to delete the tweet, but then we would at least expect for him him to clarify what he meant since his tweet seemed to go against the central and the foundational message of the entire Bible and historic Christian teachings. I personally think that Warnock, as a Bible teacher with tens of thousands of people sharing his tweet, if he didn't agree with the implied message, then he should feel obligated to clarify what he meant rather than just deleting it. Unless, of course, he does believe that we can be saved by our works, by helping other people. So let's go ahead and get to the core of the issue. So what did he mean by saved in his tweet? It seems to me that he can only mean one of two things. When he says that we can save ourselves by helping others, he would have to either be talking about salvation in this life or salvation after this life. If he's talking about salvation in this life and talking about being saved on earth, then that would have to mean that he's talking about being saved from hard times during life or from physical death. But the only problem is simply helping other people won't save us from either of those things. In fact, sometimes it will actually cause us hard times in order to try to help somebody else out of hard times. And it could also cost us our life when we're trying to save someone else's life sometimes. So if that's what he means by save, then he's obviously wrong on that one. By the way, I just want to be clear, this obviously doesn't mean that we shouldn't work to fight against suffering and premature death. Of course we should, as the Bible teaches us, but there's also no reason to think that doing so can save us in that sense. So that leaves us with the second possibility that he means that if we help other people, then that means that we can be saved in a spiritual sense. But if this is what he means, then he seems to have some serious theological issues to make sense of. For starters, he seems to forget or not acknowledge what the problem is in the first place. The problem isn't that we need to do more works in order to be saved. If that were the problem, then what he said would be a solution to the problem. But the Bible's clear that that's not the problem. Instead, the problem is that in order to be in God's presence, that requires moral perfection. And so no amount of works can save us because we can't be perfect. This is why we need the life of Jesus in our place, because we can't save ourselves through our good deeds. Just look to Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. Now, if you notice, first we see that we're saved by grace, which is a free and an unearned gift. So we're saved by a free gift. And next we see that we access that free gift through faith. And faith means simply to believe or trust. And lastly, we see that the gift is from God, not from ourselves. So what we learn from this verse is that we're saved from a free gift from God, and we get that simply by trusting or believing. Now let's go ahead and look at the next verse, which tells us how we're not saved. Verse 9 tells us that it isn't by works. That means it's not by what we do. It's not by helping other people or doing any other good deeds. If it were, then we could brag about it, as Paul mentions here, and he also mentions when he's talking about Abraham and Romans 4 and so on. But the fact of the matter is, we can't brag because we did nothing to earn that gift. We simply just received received it. Think about it. If we could earn salvation by working for it, then that's not a free gift. That's called a paycheck. And Paul actually makes the same point in Romans 4, 4, and 5. He says, now to the one who works, wages are not credited as a gift, but as an obligation. However, to the one who does not work, but trusts God who justifies the ungodly, their faith is credited as righteousness. 
Counter to culture and every other religion on the planet, God does not justify the godly. Instead, God justifies the ungodly who trust in him. And it's their faith that gets credited as righteousness. The reason why is because there is no godly and there's none that's good besides God. All of us have sinned and all of us have fallen short. So a paycheck is the opposite of a free gift. They logically cancel each other out. And this is why we also read, but if it is by grace, it is no longer on the basis of works. Otherwise, grace would no longer be grace. So if it's a free gift, then you can't work for it. If you had to work for it, then it would no longer be a free gift. So now I hope you start to see why the cross is so significant. Sin separates us from God and it leads to death, but God gave us victory over sin and death through Christ and what he did for us. As the scriptures say, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So now this is significant because if you try to work to earn your salvation, as Warnock seems to say in his tweet, then your works actually count against you, not for you in the context of salvation. So by trusting in Christ and his righteousness and what he did, that righteousness is given to us as a free gift by grace through faith. And few verses sum this up better than this one found in Titus. But when the kindness and love of God our Savior appeared, he saved us, not because of the righteous things that we had done, but because of his mercy. He saved us by the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ, our Savior, so that, having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs, having the hope of eternal life. So I hope that this starts to show why so many Christians were so upset with Warnock's tweet. On the face of it, his tweet seems to fly in the face of the core message of scripture. When we're saved, we're saved not because we could earn it by working for it, but because we couldn't earn it by working for it, which is why Jesus had to die for us. If we could earn salvation by working for it, then Jesus died for nothing. But Jesus died because we couldn't, and then he offered the life that he lived as a free gift to us so that way we could have eternal life. But if you thought that Warnock's tweet was bad, then wait until you see how he tries to justify himself being a pro-choice pastor. Go ahead and click here to see what I mean. But the next time that you hear a pastor claim that we can save ourselves by working for it, what are you gonna say? What do you mean?